I love a crispy rasher in the morning. I just love a nice sausage, a nice piece of black pudding. But you know, more often than not these days, I just find this completely bland. But we shouldn't despair totally, because out there in rural Ireland, there's little springs of genius starting to pop up. And one of them is in a place called Dundrum in Tipperary. This is going to get very, very easily confused today. You're the farmer. No, I'm the butcher. You're the butcher. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're TJ. Yeah, that's right. And you're the farmer. Yeah, that's right. John Paul. Yeah, John JP. Paul. Yeah, yeah. JP. Yeah. So TJ and JP. JP yeah. 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 Like so guys, I tell you, you've it all wrapped up. Butchery, yeah. but the butcher shop, yeah. and the farm as well. Yeah. yeah and there's yeah. another brother somewhere. Yeah, he's down the factory. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've <laughs> shown na small names from him. So this is the first of your, your start of your organic herd. Yeah. yeah. So you've converted, yeah? Yeah. You yeah. found we're the religion, yeah? We were in conversion. Took yeah. a few yeah. years, didn't yeah. it? Ah, yeah. uh, a few. What happened? Why? Where? Uh, we saw the light somewhere. This is how I want to see my pigs in the field. And it's not some romantic notion of, oh yeah, it's easy for you to talk. This is how this should be brought up. Yeah. We decided to just... Uh, a good option with the demand from consumers was to uh, to look at the organic route. So I suppose about two years ago then, um, I, I decided to, to convert our farm into organic. I mean, I wouldn't get caught up in the word organic too much, mm. but you could use the words bio or happy animals, good husbandry. I yeah, mean, there's lots of things yeah, we could yeah, talk yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of all the pigs you have here, most of them will head into your factory to be killed right? yeah. and turn into your own produce as well. Yeah. So it's a win-win as well. You're not just breeding them and, and killing them, selling them onto somebody yeah, else. Everybody else exactly. You're turning them into the next thing, the sausages, the bacon and the whole thing. Yeah, we're, like, we're straight to the consumer product, you know what I mean? It's simple food traceability. JP, what breeds have you here? Uh, so what we have here basically is the Gloucester Old Spot. They're, they're an old traditional breed. They're good, good and hardy for the outdoor system, really. We also have a, a Duroc, a kind of a red Duroc. They're also very good um, for outdoor. Beautiful. And yeah. the, these guys here, they're across at Saddleback. This is one of the shops that you put a lot of produce in here. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's very successful, this arrangement. Yeah, it's, it's very good now. It's uh, the closest shop to us, and like people are great to support local produce here. Yeah, yeah, so you know. you're a bit of a local hero, are you? Oh, I don't know. I don't know about oh. that now, hopefully. <laughs> so where's your produce here? It's all here. Oh, it's all here? Yeah, here we go. So this is the Crows. This is the Crows branded stuff. This is our dry cure rashers. Yeah, which I tasted, yeah, which I really, really liked. Jumbo sausages. Yeah, what's the meat content in here? 82. We use pork shoulder. Not bad. You use pork shoulder. Pork shoulder only. Very, very good mix. Yeah, I like pork shoulder. Yeah, only pork shoulder. Can I make a suggestion looking at that? Yeah. Use a, a, a larger mince uh, on the on the blade. We have we've moved up to a six mil, and we might move up to an eight next. I think so. Yeah. Let people see the meat in <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. you know, most sausages, you know, are just emuls. They look like emulsified paste. Yeah, yeah. A sausage is just supposed to bite into it, feel that meat. You know, that's <laughs> what's it about. There's one there's one thing that's quite noticeable here. There's a price point here. You're charging five forty nine. Yeah. Okay, that's for your home local bacon. This is, it says that, uh, God knows what it says. It says Irish bacon, which scares the shit out of yeah, me. Yeah. I'll be it says seven hundred fifty grams at five forty nine. Yeah. You're matching the price of something that is. We won't talk about what it is. <laughs> you have to be competitive. People once they taste a thing like that, they'll they'll go back to it. They, you know, they'll say, "What's the difference?" And then we tell them the difference, and they taste it, and then they come back in droves. So it's very farmyard, lovely feeling the whole place. Tipperary, I tell you. So what's in here? Here we go, we've got some yeah. pig's cheeks, some nice striker bacon. Oh god, pig's cheek, huh? Pig's cheek, yeah. Well, oh, nice. that's the cheek in there. That's the cheek. The rest this is fat. The rest, ah. Yeah, so what are you going to do with this? That's the flavour. That's where so we're, we're going to fry it up. So we're going to do a, a dry cured Tipperary pork cheek salad, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. All local. I've noticed something over in the corner here that... Yeah, this is the real traditional cure. This is the way I is, like it, yeah? This is the old style hair cure the now. The old style, just salt. Just salt, How yeah. long is it in here? About a month. A month? A How month, long yeah. will it stay in there? Maybe another two weeks. Then we'll bring it up and it's ready. It's ready to hang. Good, proper, firm bacon. 
and look at the, the fat on that as well. That's, that's so nice. basically, this is your pancetta. This is my, yeah, this is our, this is our speciality. <laughs> you get very excited when you talk about pork, you, don't you? I see saliva dripping from you, huh? Well, it's nearly lunchtime. Huh? It's nearly lunchtime. I'm getting, I'm getting hungry. There's a lot of meat in this, isn't it? Ah, there's loads. Loads. What are you going to do? Cut it up, dice it up, fry it up, and uh, get it in, mix it in with a salad. I'll make the salad, yeah? Yeah, please. Good you know, you've great salads here, huh? Yeah, some really good leaves, locally produced leaves. These are just fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Picked this morning. I'm probably looking at the nicest bowl of salads I think I've ever seen in 20 years. I mean, this is just historic stuff going on here. I like the idea of this a lot. It smells great, huh? A little bit of oil in there. Yeah. Not so bad. You need a lot of this, you know. And a little bit of pinchy sugar if you have it there would be great. I have indeed. Yeah. Anything, yeah? Mm. Oh. It's, it's pancetta. Mm. Look at that there. Okay. So we need a salad, yeah? Yeah. I just think I love it. I just honestly got to take gorgeous. I didn't need no dressing because the bacon is incredibly salty, yeah? Look at that. That is just... I can't put that on, it looks so good. I just like to dress my... I just like that. Let them just... Just move. I'm going to take a big spoonful of these. I will just literally... This good. I think the pig in Irish cookery. I mean, for myself, we we, yeah, we kept a pig. I just love pork. It's it's. I've always loved pork. Uh, I'm a huge fan of it. I'm as passionate about pork as I am about chickens. So don't get me started, because all hell will break loose if I open my mouth on that. But one thing is for sure, good pork is is delicious. And you know what? If you just learn a few other ways and just buying a, a chop and putting it on a pan. You know, there, there's other ways to enjoy pork. Marinating it in the milk overnight, you know, it helps to tenderize it, because pork can be a little bit bland sometimes. Pork and milk sounds unusual, but if you look to old Italian cookery books, if you look to European, and especially Northern European cookbooks, I mean, there's nothing really bad about it. Lactose is a natural tenderizing agent, so it all works and it draws out all, all, all the blood and the meat as well, so you end up almost like a piece of veal, you know what I mean? You're, you're really enhancing this piece of pork by doing that. It's a one pot dish. It's a piece of pork sitting on some fruit and vegetables. We have apples, sour and eating. Come on, think of pork, apple, pork, fruit, you know. This is very summery. We have the prunes, we have onions and we have fennel. We have some fennel seeds and we have some sage. Salt. A sprinkling of sugar. That's the trivet, if you want to call it, um, which we'll whiz up afterwards with some vinegar in there just to make it our sauce, our chutney. Call it what you want. But fruit and pork, hmm, go hand in hand. And a piece of pork, some sage, some seasoning, some zest of orange grated on the top of it. And that's it. I'm going to place it into the oven for 55 minutes, checking it. If it needs some more, I'm not looking for a piece of meat shriveled up into nothing. I'm looking for a tinge, a tinge of pink in the middle of my pork. Feel free to give it another 10-15 minutes, but I like mine slight, a slight tinge in it. I mean, the compliment for this, because we are talking about summer food again, it's really finely shredded fennel. What I'm gonna do is just give them a, a quick blanch in boiling salted water. That's just what I'm looking for. Some segments of orange into the bowl, some olive oil, some orange juice, a tiny bit of seasoning in there, and some uh, coriander, all mixed up. A very simple, not an unusual salad, because fennel and orange, is, it's as old as the hills. I think it'd be really, really wrong to cut that pork right now. I think it's very important just to let it rest and just leave it there. It's a summer dish. 
just leave it there for 10-15 minutes. So while the meat's resting, the garnish that we cooked underneath the pork, the fennel, the apple, the apples, eating apple, sour apple, some sage, and some prune. I'm just gonna whisk up to make my chutney. This is a family party dish. All the kids around the table, you know what I mean? Nice sweet and sour chutney there, you know what I mean? Everyone loves brown sauce. This is our brown sauce. It's made exactly how it should be, properly. My chutney for my pork, my salad of fennel and orange, and my loin of pork, marinades and milk, and cooked on the trivet of apples, prunes and fennel.